Hey everyone, it's Silver with Creative Twilight. So today I'm working on pinning this chain rasp. It's for my Night Haunt Warband for Night Vault, Shadespire slash Warhammer Underworlds. I did one prior as a test model. I really liked how the ghostly bits came out, so I wanted to show how I did that. What really makes these models is getting that ethereal glow. The rest of it you can do however you want. So I wanted to show how I went about doing that. So the first thing I'm going to use is the Hexwraith Flame Technical Paint. It works really well, you can use it straight out of the pot, but it goes on darker than I like. So what I end up doing is thinning it down with a Lamy and Medium. This goes on thinner, gives me more control over it, and it allows me to build up layers as I want instead of going on too heavy. So I'll show you how I go about doing that. So what I'm going to do is take the Hexwraith Flame, and I'm going to put this on my palette here, mixing the Lamy and Medium. For a brush, I'm using the Citadel Shade Brush. I picked it up recently and I really like it. You can use any sort of brush you want. I like this in particular because it has a really big well so it holds a lot of this so you don't have to keep going back and forth uh, to pick up more paint. So basically I just load this sucker up like this, drop it in here, you can see I did this on the last model, hence the green well here. And get a little bit in here so it kind of pulls up. So now I'm going to clean my brush because I don't want to contaminate the Lamy and Medium. And then Doing the same thing, I come into the Lamy and Medium, kind of make sure I put it on the side of the well so it runs in instead of getting the green onto the brush and again contaminating it. Once it's in here, you just mix it around and it creates a, a very thin down glaze basically. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take this, apply it to the model and show you what that looks like. So now I've got my paintbrush all loaded up. You'll notice it's not too wet you'll see the dampness but it's not overflowing because I want to be able to have some control with this and what I'm going to do is just work it from the model top down and kind of like you would a wash it's really no different um, it's just I'm not going to let it pool as much into the recesses as I would with a wash I'm going to keep it a little thinner and just keep working it. Need to get a little more on my brush so I don't have to keep going back and forth so much. And then just work this down the model. I like to work from the top down because basically where your brush ends, that's where most of the paint is going to go. Where you start, there's going to be the least amount. So what I'm going to do in the end is have the bottom of this have a darker tone so it fades down to a darker green which is again why I like using the Lamy medium on this because I can build it up and get it exactly where I want it instead of going on too thick straight out of the pot so I'm going to finish doing this because this isn't terribly exciting to watch and come back in a moment alright so now that the paint has dried you can see what it looks like here and as you can see it already looks really good. It's got a nice ghostly glow to it. Um, it's not on there too dark. I really like how that looks. However, I'm going to, like I said, darken the lower areas so it kind of fades down to a, a darker green. So all I'm going to do is just more of the same, except I'm going to start lower on the model uh, to create the blend. So I'm just taking the the mix I made earlier, just a spot over here, and doing another light coat, again starting lower and uh, so that I can get these areas darker. It's just more of the same, nothing, nothing special here. And this is so thin that I don't have to go out of my way for the blending. I don't have to sit here and grab another brush and feather it out because I thinned it out so much with Lamy and Medium. It works really well as is. The other thing I'm going to do is kind of hit some of these recessed areas from the, the first coat that didn't darken as much as I'd like. Um, other than that, again, just focusing down low, you can see that it's going on darker. Sorry, it's hard to shoot and paint. I don't have a great setup for this, so I apologize in advance if... Uh, this isn't working out terribly well for you, but just 
more thin coats. Um, so I'm going to do this around the whole model, trying to get a little heavier on areas where I might have missed on the first coat, and then just work it down just like I did the first time. So I'll go ahead and finish that, come back once that's dry, and show you the result. Okay, so the second layer is on and dried. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. Before I do that, reminds me of it's something I want to mention. It's a common mistake a lot of people do when they're working with really thin paints and they're, they're new with it. I know I did it a ton. And the big thing is patience and letting the coats dry. Because you're working so thin, if you don't let it dry and you come in for another layer, what you'll end up doing is peeling up the layer prior and it just takes up all of the, in this case, the green glaze and the white would just come through. It just rubs off, it's terrible, it's hard to fix, it's nothing you want to deal with. So take the time, let it dry. Once you know it's dry, then come in and do the next coat. So something I've learned the hard way. Anyway, now that this is on here and dried, you can see where it's darker towards the bottom. I would tip this up, but the lighting tends to wash it out. Um, so you can see where it's darker, where I was doing that second layer. So all I'm going to do is the same thing again. Um, I'm just going to load it up. I'm going to work the lower areas. Basically what I'm going to do is start a little lower than I did the time prior. Um, so I'm kind of creating different layers. Um, so going a little lower to blend it down to a darker shade. And just like I did before, I'm going to go around the whole model doing that to create what should hopefully be the final blend. Where this is so thin, I might have to do it another time. I'll have to kind of evaluate it, see what I think, and judge from there. So I'll just leave this shooting while I do this, since I realize I haven't done that through the whole process. Not that it's anything riveting, but you can see how I go about doing this. So I'm just trying to gauge if I like how it's gone on just going back and touching up areas up. I feel need to be a little darker. It's not an exact science, you definitely have to uh, make some judgments. And while it's still wet, I know I was talking about blending earlier, You'll notice I'm kind of coming back to something I started and starting up higher and bringing it down. So that's one way I'm kind of blending this out. You have to do a little bit of that. If you don't, what ends up happening is you'll have a visible line where you did that layer. So you do have to do a little blending. It's nothing overly complicated. Again, this is so thin that it kind of does the work for you really. All right, so I think I like where that's at. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. Actually, probably what I'm going to do is grab my smaller detail brush and kind of hit some of these other areas I did earlier, like in between the fingers. It's not quite as dark as I want it. I'm trying to create a fair bit of contrast here. I'm sure you're all terribly excited watching me do this. You can see the face, which I didn't show prior. So, just kind of touching up anywhere, any of the folds that really didn't get enough of this the first time. You can do this at any point in the process, really. I just figure I'll do it now since hopefully the coat I just did should be the last one. Alright, so 
So I'll let that sit, let it dry, come back and show you what we've got. So the third layer is on. You can see that transition I was working on, how it's darker towards the bottom. And it's almost where I want it. I'd forgotten on the test model I did before I did all of this, this guy here, the very final layer I did, let's see if I can get this to focus, I went with the pure night haunt to hit that very dark green towards the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do on this guy here. So I've got my brush loaded with the pure night haunt. So just kind of going over the same stuff I've already done. It's the thing with uh, doing this sort of thing is it's a lot of the same. So I'm just hitting the very bottoms at this point though. Kind of blending it out to a very dark green just to give that extra bit of contrast and the final step which I'll show after which is pretty simple is just doing some white highlights just to really make this pop so I'll be doing that after I do this so it's not much I need to do here just a little bit to kind of push it I'm realizing this camera is just not in focus. Yeah, this is not my thing. I apologize. So, just kind of pushing this down a little more, getting it dark, and that's probably good. So, like usual, go ahead and let this dry, see how that comes out, and I'll be back in a moment. All right, so this is pretty well dry. It's not 100% dry, but the white highlighting I'm going to do is not going to touch any of those areas. I'm focusing on the top areas so it doesn't matter that it's a little wet at the bottom because like I said I'm not going there. Plus I have the Citadel holder um, which if you don't have one definitely pick it up it's eight bucks and it keeps your hands off the model which is horrible you always rub paint off and, and mess up things you've already done at least I did so anyway so I'm just gonna come in here with a brush do a little white highlighting I'm going to be pretty selective about it. I don't want to push everything up to a white. And the the white I'm using is also thinned down, so it's going to it's translucent, it's going to blend it, so it's going to maintain this this greenish look without completely pushing it into white. So that's all I'm doing. Again, just very selectively, I'm going to go over this. I'm going to do this off camera because it's hard for me to do the highlighting with my camera set up this way. So I'll do that and I'll be back in a moment. I've gone through, I've done some selective white highlights. There really wasn't a lot to do. I just hit a few of the really high points. Uh, like I hit the knuckles on that hand holding the mace. Um, I did a little on the face here. Just areas that are already lighter, just to push that contrast a bit more. So you kind of get that white green to a dark green fade effect that I was going for. So this guy is done. I'm pretty happy with this. I could probably spend a lot more working on the blending, but I'm trying to do this army, this warband for Shadespire, pretty quickly. I'm not going to go completely nuts with these guys, because like I said, if you can get this glow effect, this sort of eeriness to them, you've, you've really got it. Everything else kind of falls into place. So that's it. Um, pretty simple. Like I said, it's, it's really just about using Lamy and Medium mixed in with that hex ray flame so that you can you can work your transitions and that's it so hope you all enjoyed this and uh i'll catch you later